Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Junk Food and You. Uh, this is the podcast where I sort of just talk about uh, random things. Sometimes it's about a particular product, sometimes it's about something going on in Candy Critic. It's just sort of a random thing. Sometimes I interview people. Uh, make sure to check the uh, old episodes here on uh, YouTube, uh, and you can uh, see what it's all about. Today, however, we're going to be talking about YouTube itself. And I'm going to talk about my uh, the top five videos for in views that I have on, uh, on on YouTube right now on Candy Critic, and they're not totally surprising, but kind of surprising at the same time. Uh, the interesting thing about them, I would say, is almost all of them are episodes of Chris. Why would you eat that? Which I figured is the case because I think people like to watch me eat weird things. Um, there's a few episodes that didn't make the top ten list, which I, or the top five list, which I'm kind of surprised by. But, uh, and the number one, I'm completely baffled why that would be, like, so many people are interested in it. And it's, it's kind of garnered a bit of controversy. But uh, the number five uh, video, I've got a list here, and I made sure I wrote this one down because this one is particularly complicated to say. It was the episode of Chris, Why Would You Eat That? Where I ate, ate uh, Camel Brand Chili, uh, e- chili Tapioca, Chili Tapioca Ecan Bilis. Um... I definitely remember eating this. I remember buying it. I actually bought it, I think I bought it in Singapore. I bought it at this like grocery store in Singapore. And the reason I got it is because all it's had in big letters on it was Camel Brand. Didn't say what it was until you read the back. And it was this red red gunk on white flakes. Now the white flakes I figure are some kind of tapioca root. Um, most people in North America associate tapioca with it being like... Um, that uh, the little bubbles you get in like bubble tea and stuff like that. But this is, I believe, tapioca root. It was covered with like red sauce that was spicy. So it was kind of spicy. It was kind of weird tasting. Strangely enough, a lot of people commented on that video and been like, no, 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 I love this stuff. It's the best. Um, I, I won't say it's the best. It was definitely an episode of Chris, Why Would You Eat That? where I didn't really enjoy it that much. It wasn't like gag reflex, spit it out, but it wasn't great. So I guess, you know, it, it, I can see why, you know, kind of got a visceral reaction and apparently quite popular in parts of Southeast Asia. So that's, that's why I think people are kind of interested because I don't think, uh, too many people talk about this weird snack in, 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 at least in English in North American places. So, uh, the next video I had is kind of a weird one too. It's an episode of Chris, why would you eat that? Where I ate something that I'm not really sure what it was, but I believe it was some kind of candied almonds. I believe I picked these up in Pakistan. And it was just basically these candied almonds with this like white sugar on the outside. And I mean, they were candied almonds with like a really hard candy shell. It was really weird, but it wasn't that strange. Like it was one of those ones where I sort of did Chris, why would you eat that? I'm like, okay, it's candied almonds. I mean, they're kind of strange. They're kind of got this weird bland flavor to them, but they're just candied almonds. But apparently people are very interested in mysterious candied almonds. So that's why it's like the number fourth most watched video I've got right now. Um, after that, cotton candy craft dinner. So this was a huge trend that came out. This is the one I kind of expected would be on this list. Basically, craft dinner came out with these things called flavor boosts, if you haven't heard. And flavor boosts came in all these assorted flavors. They had poutine, uh, buffalo wings, uh, what is it, butter chicken. Uh, oh, what was the other one? It was like a, like a spicy one, like a jalapeno, I think it was. And then there was the oddball, which was, uh, cotton candy and it was like immensely popular because people wanted to try it and quite frankly it wasn't really that great it didn't even really taste like cotton candy to me i was kind of disappointed with it but you know i can definitely see it was really trendy at the time so i can see why that video really took off and a lot of people watched it um here in canada like it was only a canadian thing too which was kind of odd because most of the time when you see those things they start in the states and then come to canada maybe um so it's kind of neat that Canada had that exclusively so for me it felt kind of cool being a Canadian but um, I still see them around every once in a while and you still see them on discount now because they're all expired they stopped making them but every once in a while you still see a box of them sitting in a grocery store and uh, actually recently we picked up a few packages of the jalapeno one which turned out to be the best one which really surprised me Um, Allison loves putting it on some of her macaroni and cheese uh, just regular like she makes macaroni and cheese not craft dinner but like with real cheese and everything so she tends to sprinkle it on there and she likes to give it a bit of spice and a bit of extra flavor so something good came out of it but the uh, the, the cotton candy one to me eh, just didn't really work so after that it was the uh, fresh durian so durian as 
you may know is uh, the, the stink fruit. It's the uh, world's smelliest fruit. It uh, reeks of what I'd like to say it's like burnt onions and rubber. Like or rotten onions and burning rubber is sort of how it smells. Kind of how it tastes too. Uh, if you plug your nose, it's very creamy and nice. But the minute you unplug your nose, the smell just takes over. It's an intense, tense flavor and smell. The smell is so intense that it is actually illegal to bring it on certain airlines. Um, like they won't allow it. Uh, certain hotels in Southeast Asia in particular will not allow you to bring durian into the room. We purchased the durian. We had some friends over and we thought they would enjoy it. And they were, they shot the episode with me because um, we thought they would enjoy the experience. They did. They had a really good time. They actually turned out liking it more than I did. Um, which, you know, if you watch the video, you'll see why. But one of the interesting things about it is uh, we actually had it for a while. Uh, we bought it the day before we were going to eat it. And uh, it came in a bunch of bags and I bagged it and bagged it. And then I also wrapped it in cling film like a couple of dozen times because I knew it, it would stink. And so I thought, you know, in the cling film, in the bags, it'll be fine in the uh, kitchen until the next day, until we were going to crack it open. Next day came around and uh or didn't come around next day came around at about 2 a.m woke me up because i could smell it in my bedroom uh with the door closed and everything like that so i went out to the kitchen and it really smelled so i ended up putting it on the balcony for the rest of the night um and that's and that's why we ended up shooting it out on the balcony because i knew when i cracked it open i didn't want our kitchen to reek like durian for a few days either one of the interesting things about durian i actually developed a bit of a tolerance for it in uh while i was living in cambodia because all the grocery stores sold durian. So when you go in the grocery store, that smell just kind of hits you. And after a while, you just kind of get used to the smell a little bit. Um, I still didn't love eating it. But even by the time we shot this, I was developing a bit of a better uh, appreciation of durian. I think if I spent quite a few years, sort of like what I did with licorice, where I sort of developed the taste, I could actually learn to enjoy durian. Um, I just haven't... It's very expensive, even in Southeast Asia. Hard to get in North America... And so I just don't think I've had the, uh, been, had enough contact with it to really have it uh, affect me and, and, and have it, the, the flavor sort of calm down for me. So it's, it's always going to be a little bit gross. I have a feeling it's been a couple of years since I've been in Southeast Asia and smelled a durian. I think if I smelled one now, I'd probably be kind of grossed out. So the last episode is really surprising. I don't know why this is the most popular, but it was an episode of Chris Why Would You Eat That where I uh, drank Coke and Pepsi. Or Pepsi, not Coke and Pepsi, Pepsi and milk. A lot of people, like real strong opinions about this. Like some people are like, why would you curdle milk in Pepsi? That's disgusting and all that. And then other people were like, this is like a classic thing that I remember having as a kid. Like just, this is like a real sort of wall between people. Some people love this and some people are like, why in the world would you do this? Um, yeah, so I, I did it. The thing I learned about it is if you think about it, it's sort of just like having an ice cream float where the ice cream's melted and not sweet. It doesn't have like a vanilla flavor. I mean, if you were to add a bit of sugar and a bit of vanilla and milk to your Pepsi, you basically have a float that's melted. So it's not that bad. Like it wasn't that shockingly horrible to me. I can understand, like it's kind of got an interesting cream soda, I believe is probably inspired off of this or, you know, to some degree. Uh, I got inspired from it because Laverne and Shirley, they used to, love uh, Pepsi and milk. That was a thing. So that's what sort of inspired the video. But apparently some of you out there just think this is the worst idea possible and think it's horrible. I don't know if you've ever actually tried it or whether it's just in your imagination. And some of you love it. And obviously you have tried it and you love it. So that's great and continue to love it. So, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, that, that's the top five videos. Uh, I'll round them out again. It was the, uh, Chris, why would you eat that? The Camel brand, uh, uh, chili tapioca ecan bilis. Um, then after that, candied almonds. It was a question mark at the end of that, the name of that video. After that, cotton candy craft dinner. Um, then there was an episode of Chris, Why Would You Eat That? where I ate fresh durian with some friends of mine. And the last one was uh, Chris, Why Would You Eat That? Pepsi and milk. Again, kind of surprising. Um, I might do this video every once in a while where I just sort of recap, see if any other new new ideas. For some reason, I think there there's always going to be an episode of Chris, Why Would You Eat That? in our in the top five and it might always be a majority. So I'm glad you guys like the episodes. I actually have fun doing it cause it often gets me uh, trying new things uh, that I may not necessarily try, you know, and try experiments. I think about, you know, interesting things that I see and, and hear about tasting and, and 
think, well, I could do a video out of that. So, well, thanks for watching um, this episode of Junk Food and You, where I talked about top five videos on YouTube. Uh, as always, you can follow me on YouTube, on Twitter, at Candy Critic, or go to candycritic.org and find links to all of our other social media, including Facebook and uh, Instagram and all that fun stuff. You also have a link to our YouTube channel, so make sure to check that out. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, like and follow, that would be great. And check out some of those videos if you want to check out sort of our, our weirdest videos, uh, our most popular videos. I also think they're some of our weirdest. Um, you can also uh, follow me on Patreon, patreon.com slash candycritic. There you will get advanced videos. So every time I put out a video, even this one, a week before uh, the patrons get to see it and can comment on it and talk about it and everything like that, uh, you also get some bonus content, weekend videos, things like that. So uh, make sure to check that out because uh, it helps support the site and you get some cool stuff, including sometimes for comic books, artwork, that kind of stuff, candy even. So, um, but uh, thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you next time. Bye.